Okay, we have asserted that the uh, most common generally used term or congenital anomaly, anomalies is the word malformations. And here are some of the more common ones. And once again, a malformation, as defined uh, previously, is an error of morphogenesis. So in other words, we have tissues and organs which are not forming properly. Uh, polydactyly, you know, many fingers, more than five, pretty common. Syndactyly is fusion of fingers. Cleft lip, a very common malformation. Its severity uh, can also be related to how much of the palate uh, that it involves as well. As you know that the hair lip and the cleft palate often go uh, hand in hand with the cleft palate being more severe. Some uh, lethal malformations uh, are, are quite uh, grotesque and as you might guess something like this uh, is uh, incompatible with life and not only that but uh, a severe external malformation is very often uh, associated with internal uh, malformations as well. And sometimes you look at some of these defects here and you wonder how the uh, fetus or embryo could have even gotten that far in development. It's not my purpose to uh, uh, give you a horror show of all the possible things, just to uh, have a more of a solidification of the word malformation. We said that a disruption was not a malformation but a uh, tissue or limb or organ which is developing properly and then disrupted by an external force. In this case, one of the most common uh, causes of di uh, disruptions are amniotic bands in which you have thickenings or fibrosis of the uh, amnion uh, putting constrictions on usually extremities uh, to have appearances that look something like this. These are uh, classical disruptions. Uh, <coughs> an interesting concept, and I think uh, it is worth to differentiate, is the uh, concept of a sequence. A sequence is one single thing, but it may have multiple causes and multiple effects. And the classical sequence, and quite frankly, I really can't think of too many others, are, is a so-called Potter's sequence. And Potter's sequence or what's called Potter syndrome, often still is, is equated with the term oligohydramnios, not enough amniotic fluid. It's decreased. Why is it decreased? Could be several reasons. One is that there is uh, uh, not enough uh, fluid being made uh, by the fetal uh, kidneys or renal agenesis. Another reason is that there is enough, but there's a leak in the amnion. Nevertheless, the bottom line is there's oligohydramnios. On the basis of this, the uh, extremities of the fetus and the face are not buffered by enough water and therefore they have to conform more with the external pressure. So you'll get a flattened facies or a club foot, uh, more scientifically known as talipes echinovarus. Uh, and because respiratory motions are important for lung development, if there is not that buffering of amniotic fluid, the thorax uh, cannot uh, uh, go through the respiratory motions enough, and therefore uh, there will be pulmonary hypoplasia as well. And for another reason I don't understand, uh, maybe somebody can Google it, is that these babies often have breech uh, presentation as well. But remember, the sequence is nothing more than one observation with uh, multiple causes and multiple effects. That's Potter's sequence. Uh, and here we go, oligohydramnios, causes up here, uh, with fetal compression being the main effect, and here are the multiple effects of fetal compression. In addition, uh, there is a amnion nodosum, which means there's little nodules in the amnion, possibly due to either leakage or other problems, uh, and uh, that's another effect or common observation in the Potter's uh, sequence. See these little nodules here along the amnion? This is amnion nodosum. Uh, they may very well be uh, squ have squamous metaplasia as well, and here's a general effect, including clubfoot, of uh, generalized fetal compression due to lack of amniotic fluid. Uh, let's get into a couple of more basic um, 
definitions again, and these are not new definitions. These are things we've defined on day one. But with one exception, which is a major difference, uh, these are all associated with uh, fetal anomalies as well. Agenesis refers to complete absence of an organ. Renal agenesis, no kidneys. Atresia is absence of an opening. So if you normally have uh, a tubular structure, such as portion of a gastrointestinal uh, system, and there is um, no longer the ability to pass through the tube, that is atresia. Hypoplasia, same definition as before. It's a decreased uh, incomplete development of tissues or organ because of decreased numbers of cells. And by the same token, hyperplasia is exactly the opposite. It's associated with increased numbers of cells. Now remember hypertrophy, when we defined it classically, had nothing to do with numbers of cells, but it's increase in size with no change in the number of cells. Now the only different concept here from what we talked about before is this concept of dysplasia. So you have to remember that pediatric dysplasia is different from the type of precancerous dysplasia we have talked about so many times already. In pediatric dysplasia, uh, it's spoken of in terms of a malformation in which the cells are abnormal. They're abnormally organized. There may be cartilage or bone where they shouldn't be, but it is not pre-malignant. Otherwise, when we use the term dysplasia, we are almost always talking about a process which very often may very well go into malignancy. Uh, it's no surprise that some of the uh, major problems that can go wrong intrauterine would more likely go wrong in the earlier uh, portions of the nine-month interval. And to give you the overall statistics, less than half, less than half of all conceptions advance beyond 20 weeks. And the vast majority of these that don't uh, occur at time of implantation, so which is usually like day six or seven uh, after fertilization. So uh, the, the hardcore statistics are is that 75% um, of early uh, spontaneous abortions are really implantation failures and very often not even uh, recognized by the uh, woman, uh, and the amount of pregnancy loss after implantation is a relatively smaller portion, anywhere from 25 to 40 percent. So as you might have suspected, the earlier you are in pregnancy, uh, the more dangerous the period for something going wrong, and the single most dangerous time period of all is at implantation. Here are some of the common uh, congenital anomalies. Uh, these are all things you have probably heard of, but I just wanted to give you a feel for the fact that the top uh, four or five, let's say the top four certainly, uh, is more than half of all of them. So clubfoot, patent ductus arteriosus, VSD, cleft lip with or without the palate looks like it's about two-thirds of all of them and the last five or six are all you know just a couple of percent so that's why I like to take these concepts like this and make little diagrams number one congenital malformation club foot number two patent ductus arteriosus which we'll talk about in the uh, cardiac chapter coming up and then VSD probably more common than ASD so I think you could uh, legitimately say that VSD is the second most common uh, anomaly after a patent uh, ductus. Okay, uh, I think we'll end here, but just open the door to the next topic. We'll be talking about the so-called causes, some well-known and some very mysterious of congenital anomalies. And like the things we talked about, we talked about causes of disease, causes of tumors, causes of uh, uh, mutations. They all are in the same category of the usual suspects. So we'll end it at there. Thank you very much and see you on the flip-flop.